Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will learn something called as measure of central tendency, which will be first part with respect to descriptive statistics. Okay. So what is this measure of central tendency? In order to understand any data, it is vital or important to know about the center of that particular data. Right. So that once we know the center of the data, we can get some further information like how much spread is the data, like variance, standard deviation, etc, etc. Right. So first it is important to know the center. So there are certain measures to measure the central tendency of the data or in other words, it's also called as location estimation. Okay. So the first thing in measure, uh, measure of central tendency would be mean. Okay. So it's called as mean. It is also known as average. Okay. So this may look trivial, maybe just the basic, but please listen to me carefully. Uh, I am talking about mean in depth, how it is affected by the unwanted data in it. Okay. So let's see. So what do we mean by mean? So let's say we have some data like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And if we want to take the average of this, what we will do, we will add everything and then divide it by the total number of elements in this particular set, right? So in this particular set, we have five elements and what's the sum of this? It will be 15, 5 plus 4, 9 plus 3, 12 plus 2, 14 plus 1, 15. So if we calculate this, it will be 3. So this 3 is our average or mean, right? So in order to describe it mathematically, we can write the formula as, so there are two things. So this mu, this is called as population mean, population mean, and this is given as summation i is equal to 1 to n xi divided by n, where n is total number of data points, total number of data points we have. So in, in our example, which I have taken here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n will be 5 if we consider this as a population. Okay. So there is another thing called as sample mean. Okay. So that is represented as x bar and the formula looks similar. i is equal to 1 to small n xi divided by small n. Right. So these two are our different formulas for sample mean and population mean. So why do we have sample mean and population mean? So, in real world scenarios, it is almost always impossible to collect the population data. Okay. So, population data collection is almost always impossible. So, what we do? We will collect some sample out of the population. Okay. And then compute its mean and we call it as X bar. So, this is the formula for that. So, what is this N? N here is the sample size sample size right if you want to take an example uh, let's say uh, out of all the schools in a city we want to calculate the average result of the class 10th students okay so let's say uh, if we are not confined to the city if we want to take the survey of entire country there are multiple schools there are close together schools and it is impossible to collect the every everything every data from that right so what we do, we just randomly sample some uh, data, we call it a sample data and then let's say out of 1 crore schools we have, right, out of 1 crore schools, let's say we surveyed around 10,000 schools and then this will be n, our small n. So, and then we will add up all the marks of the class 10 students and then divide it by 10,000. So this will give us average marks of the 10,000 schools for particular class that we are doing the survey on. Okay. Once we have the sample mean, we can generalize it with some other methods and generalize this number to our population mean and then call it as mu. But this will always have some error term associated with it because we are measuring something on the sample and then we are concluding something on the population. So that is the part of inferential statistics, right? So that's a part of inferential statistics. So let's not go into that direction now. Let's stick to the descriptive statistics. Okay. So I hope you have understood mean and why we have two different representations, population mean and sample mean. Now there is one interesting thing with the mean. 
So if I have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mean of these numbers will be 5, right? Or 3, sorry. So the mean of these numbers will be 3, okay? Now, if let's say I have some unusually large number, let's say I have 80, okay? So what happens? The mean of this particular set will be, so the numbers that I have now is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 80. So mean will be, how it is calculated? It is 80 plus 15. So that's 95 by 6, right? So uh, what will be the number? It will be nearly 6, right? Nearly uh, 16, right? 16, 6 is uh, how much it is? 96, right? So this is how the mean shifts towards the unusually large number. Because of just one unusually large number, our mean earlier which was 3, it is now changed to 16. And this doesn't look right, right? Because uh, this particular thing here, unusually large when we compare to the rest of the numbers. We call this as outlier. This is called as outlier. And this outliers will always cause problem while calculating mean. Cause problems to mean. Okay, so that's why what we say mean is very sensitive to outliers. Mean is very sensitive. Okay, so if we know that in our data, if you already know that we have outliers, it's always better to not compute mean. Okay, so in order to tackle this, we have something called as median. So that's our second measure of central tendency. So median, let's talk about median now. So what is this median? So it's the central center number, right? So the number at the center. So what are the steps to calculate the median? First, arrange the data. Arrange the data in ascending order, right? Then second step is pick the center one. Pick the center value. This center value will be our median. Median. Okay. So, this is actually a 50 percentile data. So, I will talk about percentiles in my other video. Let us not worry about that. So, this is our median. So, in our data set that we had earlier, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is our earlier data set. So, what will be the median? So, first we have to arrange this in ascending order. This is already in ascending order. So, our median will be the center one that is 3. So, this is our median. Okay. So, let us say we have an outlier in our data set. So, just like in our previous example, let us take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 80. Okay. So, these are our data points. Now, how do you find the median? We do not have any center data here, right? So, we take the middle two numbers and take the mean of that. So, it is 3 plus 4 by 2, which is 7 by 2. So, median is 3.5. So, new median is 3.5. So, what you can conclude from this? Even though we have unusually large number in our data set, median does not seem to be much affected by its presence. Correct? So, it is nowhere near to the previous mean that we had which is 16 right so this is nowhere near to 16 we just got the median of 3.5 which is almost close to the earlier median which is 3 right so this is why if we know that we already have the outliers in the data we will go for median so median is median is not sensitive to outliers okay not sensitive to outliers, whereas mean is sensitive to outliers. It is very sensitive to outliers. Okay. Now, there is another thing called as mode. Mode is actually not a measure of central tendency, but this is the value which is repeating many times, the maximum number of times. So, suppose let us say I have the data 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 2, 5. Okay, if this is my data, which number or which element is repeating maximum number of times? Times. So that will be our mode. So in this data set, what is our mode? 
So two is repeating one, two, three, four times, right? So rest all are repeating less than four times. So our mode will be two. Okay. So this is how mode is calculated, and this doesn't actually give us the measure of central tendency. So just to explain to have the complete uh, completeness, mean, median, mode in that order. That, that's why I have covered this. Okay. So this is uh, how we calculate mode, and this mode is generally used in categorical data. Okay, categorical data. So I have never seen using mode in the numerical data, but there may be cases which I might have not encountered yet. But yes, if we are dealing with categorical data, we cannot compute uh, mean and median, right? So we will always go with mode. in case of categorical data okay so hope it is clear till this point fine right let's let's move on to something called as weighted mean so the fourth measure is weighted mean so what is this weighted mean so let's say the average that we are computing is getting affected differently by different numbers associated there different number present in that particular list so what we do we take some number and multiply that with its particular weight do the same thing for second number multiply it with its weight okay do like this for all the numbers plus xn wxn and divided by the total number of elements that we have so this is what is called as weighted mean so where we would use this weighted mean so if you guys know about grade point average grade point average or in short it is called as gpa so this is how we calculate the gpa so this is actually a weighted average so let's say we have some six subjects in our curriculum each subject will carry different weights so subject 1 will have four credits subject 2 may have 3 credits subject 3 may have 6 credits something like this right so we can take this as weights and then compute the weighted mean in order to compute the average score of each student so what we do let's say in subject 1 student scored 80 marks out of 100 right and in subject 2 a student scored 60 marks out of 100 so what we do we do not take just 80 we take the weights multiplied with it in this case it's the number of credits right if you guys know how do we calculate graded point average so that's basically our weighted mean weighted mean okay so this is about weighted mean and where do we use it so there is another thing called as trimmed mean so this is interesting so trimmed mean what do we mean by trimmed mean so let's say we know that we have a outliers in the data outliers in data that we have so we know that we have the outliers so what we do we trim some percentage of unusually small numbers and unusually large numbers and then compute the mean so first step here is set the trim percentage set the trimming percentage trimming percentage then remove the trim percentage data from both ends from both ends so when i say both ends so it's it includes unusually small unusually small and unusually large numbers so once we remove that from our data set then we will again compute the mean so that will be our trimmed mean so for example let's say if i have 1 2 3 10 20 30 1000 2000 3000 2, 3, so in this case if this is our data set this is just an example for simple and clear explanation okay so if you look at this unusually these three are unusually large and these three we can consider it as unusually small so what we do we trim these numbers we take only these three and then compute the mean so 30 plus 20 50 50 plus 10 60 60 by 3 so 20 so 20 will be our trimmed mean out of this particular data 
so this may uh, this may confuse you guys stating that maybe these are the usual values these are the unusual values but think that instead of just 10 20 30 let's say we have 25 16 33 something like this right so in this case it is clear that these three and these three are our unusually small and unusually large values so in this case we will trim those we will exclude that and then consider only this chunk of data to compute the mean and we call it as trimmed mean okay so this is it about the measure of central tendency these are all the measures that we have so if you understand this you will understand my next video which will be measure of dispersion measure of dispersion so in this we will talk about something called as a first range so range is not that greatly used second will be a variance third something called as mean absolute deviation and finally we will have our standard deviation okay so we will see each one of these in detail with the mathematical formula in my next video so if you guys have any questions please reach out to me in comment section if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and also if you are liking the content please give it a thumbs up and share among your peers okay so till we see you in the next video happy learning bye bye